Hey, Smart Pack fans. Welcome to a special edition of Ask the Vet. You may notice I'm sitting on this side, not that side. I'm Dr. Lydia Gray, the Staff Veterinarian and Medical Director at Smart Pack. This is Narita Richards, PhD. I'm going to let you introduce yourself. Sure. Thanks, Lydia. So I'm Narita. I'm an equine nutritionist from Australia, which is probably quite obvious given my accent. I was going to say far. Yeah. <laughs> obvious. True. Uh, I work as a consulting nutritionist in Australia. I formulate feeds and supplements for um, companies all over the world. And I also uh, run the feedxl.com website, which is a nutrition calculator that horse owners use to put their horses' diets together. We love it. Yeah. Great. We ask you to submit your horse nutrition questions specifically, and then this segment will answer one of those questions. You'll answer one of those mm -hmm. questions. I'm helping. And then to see the, the other questions, just click on the playlist at the end of the video, and you get to see them all. So, ready? Mm -hmm. okay. ready. Kathleen Valletta from Facebook asks, I brought a new horse home that has been on grain with previous owner. Mm -hmm. I do not feed grain. Instead, I give free choice alfalfa slash orchard and mm -hmm. grass. Should I continue his old grain, or is it okay to keep him on my regime? His body score is low, 4, with just a few ribs barely showing. He is an 11-year-old appendix with no health issues. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a lot of questions I would love to ask yeah. Kathleen to establish yeah. exactly what's going on for this horse. So, right. I mean, in my head, I'm thinking he's being fed grain, and yet he's a body condition of 4. He's so. not. I do not feed grain. Uh, I do not feed grain. But he's only new, so yep. assuming he's come from his previous owner on yep. grain. And Should I continue his old grain? Yeah, yep. so he's, he's come, I, I'm guessing, come to her in that body Ken. condition. Yeah. Um, so, you know, why is he in that body condition when he was being mm -hmm. fed grain? Was it because he's a really hard keeper? Is it because he was in a lot of work? Um, was he not being fed enough mm -hmm. forage? So, I mean, a lot of horses, depending, again, you know, the answer depends on how hard you're going to work him, Kathleen. Um, you know, if he's going to be in a lot of a lot of really hard work, you know, if he's going to be an endurance horse, for example, which I'm guessing from his breed he won't be, but appendix quite um, horse, maybe not, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, even if you but he could be an eventer. That's you're a doing good eventing. Eventer. Um, you know, if they're working them really hard, the chances of being able to maintain body condition just on um, hay gets lower. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, a lot of horses can, but if you're working them hard, you probably have to bring something else in. But you know, if he's a if he's a relaxed horse. Um, and he's in sort of light to moderate work and the quality of your hay is really good. Um, the really nice thing about having a horse on a forage based diet like this is their gut health just oh, yeah. blooms. Right. Um, so their, their gut bacteria and also now they're finding there's all these um, anaerobic fungi in the gut that have mm. a massive role in, mm -hmm. in fibre digestion. So you're really supporting all these um, beneficial little microbes in the gut and it means that they extract pretty much all the energy they can out of out of your um, forages. So what you might find, and d again, I'd love to know what the grain was this horse was on, but if mm -hmm. he was on some sort of raw grain, so an uncooked corn-based product or something with uncooked barley in it, um, those grains, well, the starch isn't very digestible in the small yep. intestine, yep. And so it travels down and ends up in the hindgut and it feeds the bacteria you do mm -hmm. not want in the hindgut, so the amylolytic starch digesting right. bacteria. And those bacteria are really lazy when it comes to fermenting <laughs> fibre. Lazy bacteria, they, you heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they, they don't like hard work. So fermenting fibre yeah. is hard work compared yeah. to fermenting a starch. So what they'll do is they'll selectively ferment the starch. Um, they don't like to ferment the fibre, so they don't too lazy to do it. And they also wow. create this environment where they basically shut your fibre fermenting bacteria down. Mm. So you're in this situation where you, you're not using the grain efficiently and then you're not using the fibre efficiently either. So you can be feeding, you know, you can be feeding pounds, of like many, many pounds yeah. of feed right. in a day and still have a horse that's yeah. body condition four just because gut health has been destroyed right. with what you're feeding. Makes so, a lot of sense. you know, if if you get him and you put him on this hay-based diet and his, his gut health um, improves if it's wasn't great when you mm -hmm. bought him, you may find that you've got a beautiful, healthy horse in really lovely condition. Mm -hmm. The only thing I would add to this is that hay, and it doesn't matter how good quality it is, it's nearly always low in trace minerals. So copper and zinc, um, I would I would say 95% of the time, if not more, wow. they do not contain enough copper and zinc to meet a horse's requirements for optimum health. Okay. Yeah, and we frequently see, um, so a horse's minimum requirement for copper is 10 milligrams per kilogram. 
and speak in, in metric terms. Um, and um, a lot of haze will have some like, like five or six milligrams per kilogram. So you know, it's half of what they mm -hmm. need for their minimum requirement. Mm -hmm. And they just, over time, it'll show in, in um, degenerating joint health and in degenerating hoof health. So it's really, really important. I would add either a vitamin mineral supplement or a balancer pellet into that diet. And So a hay diet might put, make a horse have the right weight, might bring this horse from a four to a five. Mm -hmm. It might even put a good bloom on them. But you're saying internally they're not having all their dietary nutritional needs met. Exactly. And so yeah. the other thing I would add is um, when I have a horse that is being fed appropriately and is not at a good weight, I wouldn't hesitate to ask my vet to come out and look at him and say, is there an underlying medical condition yeah. that is responsible really good, for this? Maybe it's, it's really parasites or teeth or yeah. something. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a really good point. Okay.